Hello. As we've agreed, I'm going to review the slides for Chapter 5 on business communication with you. Let me tell you that I teach an entire semester course on business communication. Actually, we offer two of them, BCom 301 and Global Business Communication. So this is truly, truly an introduction. I'm going to start with slide two, which are the learning objectives. Again, as I've said before, if you cannot go back after you've read the chapter and repeat information aloud to yourself about each learning objective, you have a problem. That is the purpose of the objective, telling you right up front the expectation uh, for the quiz and later uh, the uh, first examination. So let's begin. I honestly don't think there's much in, chap in slide three, so let's take a look at slide four. Communication barriers. That's not what I meant. Barriers to communication, they can be cultural barriers, they can be organizational barriers, they can be poor communication habits in speaking and in writing that lead to confusion. And that's kind of a summary of these barriers on chapter on slide five when they list six of them. Slide six is on intercultural communication. I've lived in where I've lived in seven countries and I've worked in 37 countries. The cross-cultural issues are always there. For example, in Latin America, you don't eat dinner till 11 p.m. So if you're invited to a business dinner, you're going to be a mighty tired puppy the next morning. And because of globalization, even in the agricultural uh, Midwest of the U.S., with products being able to be sold out of the U.S., there will become uh, requirements that you understand the basics of the culture in which you're selling to. My uncle, who's long gone, had a boutique business uh, with soybeans, naturally grown soybeans, with Japan. He cornered that market and he told me many times he had to understand the Japanese way of doing business. So they could lean into him and he could lean toward them in reaching some common ground. Channel nine is, I'm sorry, slide nine is like a channel. It's packed with information. Ch uh, slide 10, consider the audience, it's not about you, is really critical. When you're communicating, you're not communicating to yourself you're communicating to me or you're communicating to your customer. And that's something I think we often forget. If they can't understand what you've read, you're going to have to do it again. Slide 11, pick the right words. And here I just want to address the texting culture. Business communication is not a text. LOL doesn't go in a business communication unless that person is your buddy. So when you're writing email, which will be the primary form of communication, at least for the next decade, in my opinion, you're going to keep out the uh, uh, text uh, abbreviations. Slide 12 is around being concise. Uh, you don't want gender bias on your part. You don't want age bias on your part. And you certainly don't want race or ethnicity bias on your part. Those will pretty much wrap up your career. 
Let me give you an example. I signed up uh, at the university for a trainer and he commented to me, well, I got to put you in a group of senior citizens. That didn't go over too well with Dr. Skip and I didn't use him. He lost my business. Let's take a look at slide 15. How will your audience respond? Exhibit 5.3. I'm a big time person that when you see an exhibit, you look at it as a visual piece of communication. It was created to send a meaning to you. And in this, on the left hand side, you can see the message. And on the right hand side, you can see the possible responses. This exhibit reinforces the narrative writing in your textbook. The same can be said for slide 16 on emails. Take a look at the little inserts in the comments. Each one is meaningful and it's real life. Uh, slide 17, strike the right tone. I think that takes a lot of experience in, in writing and in business and in life, but it does give you four examples uh, to consider. And of course, slide 18, don't make grammar goofs. Uh, one of my pet peeves is having to correct grammar. I don't think that's my role. That's the role of the high schools. But I do know that in some cases it didn't quite cut it. But now with Word, it underlines in green ungrammatical statements. And my gosh, it underlines in red typos. A word has virtually made it possible to go for perfection. And if your grammar is all messed up, the reader is going to assume, in your future the reader will be your customer, that A, you're uneducated because you have grammatical mistakes, or B, you're just lazy and didn't examine your stuff carefully, edit and make corrections. Or C, both A and B, the worst of both worlds. Slide 21 is quite true. The opening is what you want to grab the audience with. Open, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, end with a summary telling them what you told them. And the KISS rule, keep it simple, stupid. Slide 22, successful verbal presentations. Notice that it does kind of go through with more detail, tell them, tell them what you told them, that kind of a, an approach. Um, I think the use of visual aids is quite important. And as you work through your career here at Fort Hayes State University, you're going to have a lot of opportunity to work with PowerPoint uh, and work with Prezi because these are visual communication tools. Finally, or not finally, but slide 23, 10 tips for dynamic delivery. Do not stand and read the PowerPoint to the audience. We've already reviewed this. The PowerPoint is a reminder for what you will say and you uh, provide the information. Okay, the last slide was repeating the learning objectives in question form. Ask yourself those questions, answer them to yourself. If you feel your own answers on reflection or inadequate, go back in the book and find the proper answer. All right, I hope this helps you as you begin your journey in reading this chapter on business communication.